Welcome to the underground, the Steel City Underground, the black and gold standard for Pittsburgh Steelers coverage. Now, here's your host, Joe Kuzma. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the Steel City Underground podcast. My name is Joe Kuzma, and I'm here flying solo for our pregame preview between two one and two teams as the Pittsburgh Steelers this upcoming Sunday host the equally one and two New York Jets and hope to maybe climb back to 500 with a victory. But before we get there, well, we're going to get there one way or another. Uh, folks, thank you for all of your comments. Thank you for subscribing and following Steel City Underground. And I know this program as of late has really it's really been about one one guy or one position. I mean, we predicted this all the way back man, years ago when we were saying maybe Ben Roethlisberger, when would Ben be done? And who's going to replace Ben? So this show has become about who has replaced Ben. And so far that has been all one Mitchell Trubisky. And it hasn't been the prettiest of sights lately to be completely honest and there's some folks still defending it some folks that are still you know getting getting at us with the Matt Canada and the play calling stuff and I, I totally I understand it but I, I got to show you in some things too and this is publicly available information to any of you with an internet connection so hopefully if you're <laughs> tuning in to us then uh, you've got a way of accessing this but this is next gen stats for those of you uh, i'll i'll try and be as good as i can for those of you on audio but for the youtubers out there i'm going to show you and we have charts and they're just for basically mitch trubisky Najee harris and deontay johnson and as you can see maybe without even blowing it up all of the way but all of deontay johnson's receptions here and it's going to show you um, a- exactly what ends up happening. You know, after the catch, line of scrimmage is right here. How far some of these are, the route that's run, and if they're kind of grayed out and there's been a target thrown his way, uh, if they're grayed out, if it's an incompletion. And there's basically you could see the entire middle of the field. Uh, there's a the little bit of the green where he actually catches the ball. Everything is along the boundary outside and not inside the numbers outside the numbers. You could see it there and just going back with the other ones. I mean, uh, that's why I wish we had more than just Deontay and he's been operating, you know, but primarily he's like an X Y guy, but you know, sometimes he does operate in the slot. We're going to see, uh, here just kind of the same stuff. And if we end up going over and again, just because we have folks that are just listening to this only, And we can take a look at Mitch Trubisky's as well. Yes, there's a couple shots here right in the middle. That's Pat Fryermuth, who wasn't targeted until like the last two minutes of that game Thursday against the Cleveland Browns. These kind of are dotted all over, and it's the same way for the last couple of games or trio of games, I should say. There's a few shots that go here. There was an interception in one of these games, and you'll see that. So go over to Next Gen Stats. You can take a look and make the same comparisons. Unfortunately, when you click on this, see it loaded Cleveland again. Sometimes uh, this does say week two. Let's see if I get it to load the week two. Uh, It it works a little funky. I have to refresh it sometimes. Uh, Let's see. Still, Still the week three game, unfortunately. Let me see. I'll try it one more, one more time, just because it's wonderful technology here. Yeah, it's not going to load the proper, the proper deal here. But trust me, you go over, uh, give it a shot, take a look, and see all of the different statistics. And Sterling Shepard showed up there at the end because when you click on week two, then it takes you to all the week twos. Uh, you'll notice that the middle of the field just isn't targeted enough with the Pittsburgh Steelers. It's an area where Mitch Trubisky is not seeing. And I don't know if there's any amount of time or practice. Just a reminder, there's been OTAs. There's been mini camps. There's an entire training camp with three preseason games. And now we are three regular seasons, regular season games in. And if you happen to follow our website and some of the companion articles that are out there, I had, pulled up some statistics about Mitch Trubisky the other day and just going through this, some of this I had already said before, but through three games this season, he's 62 of 103 for 60.2 completion percentage, 569 yards, two touchdowns, one INT. There's five sacks. He's not fumbled the ball, but he's 27th out of 34 eligible passers 
in passing yards. He is 29th of 34 in passing touchdowns, 26 of 32 in completion percentage, 17 of 34 in passing attempts. So he has the attempts. He's throwing the rock, but he's 32 of 32 dead last in yards per attempt. I've gone through all of the other different statistics too, but Going back with the Bears, only seven games with 300-plus passing yards, 19 games with 200 or fewer passing yards. He only has one game with the six touchdown passes, zero with four or five, nine. Now, this is 46 games with 20 or plus more attempts when he was winning Chicago. So zero games with four or five touchdown passes, nine with three. So we only have 10 games with three or more passes. You have seven with two, 15 with one, and 14 with zero. That's what's alarming. And it's alarming because of the way the Steelers have operated so far. And people are going to say there's not a run game. I don't know that they fully dedicated or devoted to it, but it's difficult when other teams are going to force you to throw the ball. They're daring Mitch to throw in the middle. They're daring him to make easy passes. What's even crazier is I've heard, I've read some statistics. I saw some people talk about the Steelers wide receivers, none of which have scored a TD this year, by the way. Um, I mean, Friar Muth is a tight end. We're talking about just the receivers. Josh Roundtree had uh, brought this up uh, just earlier, I believe today. And this is the first time since 2001 that Steelers have not had a wide receiver score a touchdown in the first three weeks of a season, they went 13 and three that year and made the AFC title game, which, you know, I, I, we don't see that happening just yet, unless there's some drastic changes, something, something has got to give somewhere. So for the Steelers to get people out of the box, get that extra safety, get everyone from loading up and daring Mitch to win these games, it's not just the run game. The run game will help, but he's got to get downfield. He's got to make it. He's got to make an attempt toward the middle. Now, the the other part with this that is kind of silly. Uh, this comes from Nick Farabaugh, by the way, and this was pulled from Player Profiler. But good to give Nick the credit here. I told him uh, not too long ago. Maybe it was last week. This is the stuff you're not supposed to say out loud. But what quarterbacks attempted the most passes of 20 or more yards in the NFL, according to Player Profiler? It's been Mitch Trubisky. Okay, that's 22 attempts. 22 attempts of 20 or more yards. So he's taking these shots, and they're just they're not very accurate. He's only completed seven of the 22. That makes him 31.8%. Uh, it's 23rd in the NFL, and... Nick also notes that virtually all of those are outside the numbers. And also coming from Nick, too, is a little tidbit about George Pickens, who's had 13 targets thrown in his direction. The average depth of those targets uh, is 18.6 yards. That's the highest in the NFL among the receivers, according to Player Profiler. Five of those, 13, were deemed uncatchable. If you're seeing a th If you're seeing a trend here, Maybe the play calling, even the decisions. I didn't realize Mitch had actually gone that deep. I had criticized during the offseason that he didn't have the best deep ball. Actually, I felt just because there isn't enough of Kenny Pickett to go by and see, but he's obviously, I think he's the worst of the three. I honestly believe that Mason Rudolph has a very good deep ball, and you saw him hit George Pickens in the preseason. So it's not, it, it's not, these are things that are going to come into this Jets game, of course, because you've got a rookie, albeit. Uh, a highly decorated kind of rookie with his giant chain sauce Gardner that's going to be out there. And I think he's somebody that you could win against when you look at the receiving core that the Steelers have. But is it going to, is Mitch going to struggle? And in the same article that I had put out uh, just the other day, the Steelers in their drives have been 17 punts through three games, 35 drives, 17 of those punts. That's damn near 50%. Only four touchdowns and six field goals, so 10 drives where they've scored. Two missed field goals, an interception, and a fumble, and then four of these end at the half. Whether that's taking a knee, we know against the Cleveland Browns, he didn't take a knee before halftime. They were trying to get points, and that didn't work out, so you just can't excuse end of half as saying, well, it's just, you know, Protect the football. There was only three seconds left. Go into the lockers for halftime. 
that's not what's just necessarily going on here. Also, there's a major discrepancy in time of possession with the Pittsburgh Steelers. If you take a look at these statistics, uh, 26-18 to the Bengals, 43-42. 26-24 of offense or of time of possession on offense to the Patriots 3336 and then 2351 to the Browns 3609 this is by far the worst other than the 2019 season for the Steelers and their offense and it's another reason why their defense is getting getting shellacked uh, they weren't able to close against the Patriots i understand Maybe, you know, you have some instances Deontay Johnson catches a certain ball against the Browns or Gunnar Oshevsky doesn't muff a punt, but you got to be able to make up for these other mistakes. Everyone else, it's not like everyone else has to play perfect. And Mitch has been good at not turning over the ball. Maybe that's something that happens if you have Mason Rudolph or Kenny Pickett in there. Just somebody else. Don't get on me about who it is. If Mike Tomlin's not going to play Kenny Pickett, then don't have him as the backup. On Sunday, just put Mason out there. Why'd you keep the guy anyways? If you absolutely positively need to have a veteran quarterback in there and you need to re and you need somebody other than Mitch Trubisky, then by all means, I mean, either way, I think people, people are going to boo because it's not Kenny Pickett. If it's Mason Rudolph, especially at home, I get it. They, they, it's already got a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths, but this is slowly becoming something that they're not going to be able to crawl out of at one and three and wait until a bye week with the onslaught of the teams we already talked about ahead after the Jets. And the Jets isn't a gimme by any means. We see Zach Wilson's going to be practicing. Let's talk a little bit about that with the Jets offense, for example. Joe Flacco is one of four quarterbacks with 900 plus passing yards and five touchdown passes this season. One of four. Joe Flacco. Back up, back up a guy that's been washed for years and we never felt was truly elite to begin with is one of four quarterbacks in the NFL with these statistics. That's absolutely mind blowing to me. Uh, <laughs> just because I, I, you know, I can't get the taste out of my mouth from him being a, a Raven, but Zach Wilson last season, 2,300 yards passing over 2,300 yards, 13 touchdowns. He had nine of those passing four with his legs and 13 starts last season. Cause he was a little banged up last year as well. So you got, you got to be aware. We maybe there's not film on Zach Wilson this year. There's only film on Joe Flacco. And I'm going to say Joe Flacco is somebody that you could beat. Okay. Uh, Zach Wilson might present some problems for the Pittsburgh Steelers and their defense. The Steelers have had trouble getting to opposing quarterbacks this season. After TJ Watt went down, they're having trouble getting to Jacoby Brissett and getting to Mac Jones. They need to be able to put some pressure on the quarterbacks so you could have your other playmakers make plays, such as Mika Fitzpatrick, who did not get the Defensive player of the month. Oh, no, no. That went to Melvin Ingram. And look for some of my tweets out there. Alex Highsmith has almost doubled up everything Ingram has done other than falling on a ball that was already in the end zone. <laughs> Ingram now with the Dolphins. Uh, Alex Highsmith, by the way, I think I should bring this up, even though I'm kind of scatterbraining uh, all over the place. But let me pull the let me pull the statistics since I just happened to be on it after showing that thing about Minka, who also blocked a kick who had a pick six, who had another pick, was the one of the defensive players of the week just a couple of weeks ago against the Bengals. And this is uh, this is pretty some pretty um, eye-opening stuff as to whether or not folks believe in Alex Highsmith. I've always been an Alex Highsmith tru truther. So I'm going to just go here real quick. As you can see, this was a little banter back and forth with Paul Zeiss and uh, Chris Carter. Uh, Chris Carter is pretty awesome. I was taking his side on this. Uh, if you combine the 12 games of 2022, and that would be when Alex Highsmith uh, took over for Melvin Ingram. That was the Seattle game. What was that? Like week six, week seven. And then Ingram was out of town after that. So Highsmith becomes a full-time starter, and you combine it with the first three games of this season. You have a total of 15 games where Alex Highsmith has compiled 10 and a half sacks, 18 tackles for loss, 22 quarterback hits, and two forced fumbles. That is over uh, twice as many. 10 and a half sacks. I mean, that, that's only in 15 games to Ingram with 18 games over the last two seasons, only has four sacks. 
Seven tackles for loss, 14 quarterback hits, and two forced fumbles. It's almost double of everything. And also, there's the tackles, 80 to 32. Highsmith has 80 tackles. So he's committed to the run game. But what makes this more interesting, too, is that Highsmith blitzed uh, 61 times. Only two more times than Melvin Ingram. Melvin Ingram even being a little bit more of a part-timer with the Dolphins. That all, he's, a, he's a pass rush specialist. That's what they're sending him to do. So stuck a little bit of a thorn in my side that neither Alex Highsmith nor uh, Mika Fitzpatrick got the accolades that I felt that they should in this game. But I kind of wanted to stick on the Steelers' offense still. I wonder if Mike Tomlin would make a change if you have a bunch of punts. Presley Harvin got us a little bit of a scare earlier in the week, maybe a hip pointer or whatever it was. The Steelers brought back Jordan Berry, the punter that was there before. Third time, third stint now. They tried to get the one Colquitt brother in there, and then Harvin, and then also Corliss Waitman, who has been killing it with the Bronco. Actually, did Corliss Waitman just win this? He was no, he was one of the special teams on a race. I think it was for the week, not for the entire month, but uh, he's been doing really well. And I know people are like, well, this is just the way the Steelers evaluate talent. Well, when somebody's hurt, it's kind of always the thing where almost always the thing we know about how Tom Brady has sent it into his spot and how Ben Roethlisberger has sent it into his spot. Ben Roethlisberger was always going to be the future, by the way. And if somebody gets hurt, usually they don't lose their spot. We saw Mason Rudolph come back for Duck Hodges in that type, sort of instance. So it's kind of the way it, it kind of works. I don't think anybody would have guessed that Corliss Waitman, who couldn't stick on any NFL rosters. He was kind of just floating out there, would have done what he did. Trust me, I think the Houston Texans would feel the same way about Chris Boswell as well at this point, too, if they would have known the type of stud kicker that he was when, you know, he was like the practice squad fill-in type guy there in Houston. So just a little bit of things off the top of my head, a little bit of random news and, and notes, but it's got to get better. Does it mean it's going to be Kenny Pickett that makes it better? Kenny Pickett is going to get, take his lumps. But Mitch Trubisky, most of what's going on here with Mitch is he's creating the sacks that are happening, the incompletions. A lot of this is on him. And nobody's throwing anybody under the bus. Matt Canada says it's his fault. The players aren't saying anything. But you got to wonder how much more discontent there's going to be in that locker room until there might be a switch in. The rookie... The rookie's going to have his rookie lumps. Hey, if Kenny goes out there and throws 12 touchdowns, the 14 interceptions like Trevor Lawrence did, you know, uh, you're not going to hear a lot of arguments from me because I'm going to say, okay, okay, kid, what are you going to do in year two now? And I say, you got to see what he really does. Cause if he goes out there and throws like four touchdowns, the to 16 interceptions, then, uh, then you're raising some red flags and you necessarily don't want that next year when, if the Steelers are doing that this year and they're already one and two, I know it's only one and two, but they go to one and three. And then if they make that switch and you got the bills and the bucks and the dolphins and the Eagles coming up, yikes, that's all before the buy. And those are all going to be like slobber knocker type games. It's games that could be shootouts. And I don't think you could get into a shootout with Mitch Trubisky. Maybe you can with Kenny. Maybe you can with Mason. I don't know. We don't know for sure. I still say, I don't know with Mason because he's only got 10 starts. So there's still a chance that he, he could get it done. If he gets it done, then what? Then you're looking at what? why did we draft this Kenny Pickett guy in the first round or whatever? There's a whole lot of what ifs here. There's a lot to manage. There's these extra things, but I think you got to give some, you got to give some folks a shot to do the job here. I think with now 53 starts in the NFL, yes, 46 of those Chicago bears, 20 or more passes here with the three of them here with the Pittsburgh Steelers and additional few where Mitch Trubisky did not have 20 or more passes. So 53 starts in the NFL. I think we know where it's at. I don't want to beat the dead horse, but the run game is suffering. The, the, the guys on the line cannot, they just can't block eight, nine guys. It's just not going to work that way. It's not going to free up Najee Harris. It's not going to free up your uh, Chase Claypool being used like Debo Samuel with a jet sweep. There's got to be something. There's got to be some changes. I, I think overall, just showing you some of the next-gen stats stuff kind of paints the portrait of where the Steelers' offense needs to be headed. And I think a quarter or just one half, Mitch Trubisky kind of turns into a pumpkin at one point. If he has a bad first half, he's usually going to have a better second half. If he has a bad first half, he's going to have a poor second half. He Very rarely have I seen four consistent quarters of football from Mitch and I like, again, uh, you know, I'm wearing all the Steelers stuff. Just look around. I, I'm not hating on the Steelers. 
by any means. I want to see the Steelers succeed. I think this is the path they need to go in order to do so. Check out the articles with all of those stats. I'm going to try to sh- shut my lip on it, but I, I, I really anymore. I, I don't know what else could be done differently or how we can expect anything different, even a victory against the Jets. I mean, this game, we'll take a look here at uh, our one of our sponsors here at the Steel City uh, Underground Podcast. And... Uh, that's B U S R, and we have in the uh, over the last few weeks run a special promo with B U S R, and w- what you folks want to do is you want to sign up, look in the show notes, Bitly. That's B I T dot L Y slash B U S R dash Steel City. Try and use all lowercase numbers in that, so you make sure you get that special promo. Uh, because then what ends up happening is then maybe you don't end up uh, getting that specific bonuses. And BUSR, they have everything over on their site. Anything that you might want to bet on, they've got it. Everything from NFL to NCAA to, M- uh, I say MMA, I maybe even NASCAR is on there. They've got politics on there. I mean, it's pretty silly stuff, but you could dig down the site and actually make a bet for the next president of the United States, everyone from Oprah Winfrey to, I think I saw Bill Gates on there. And there's just some really, really crazy, crazy type stuff. I'm going to take a look here at uh, some of the lines for some of these games and in particular the Steelers and the Jets. So if you have a chance, that website is B-U-S-R. Bet with confidence. They have great customer service, by the way. They even contacted me to ask if I had any questions on my first deposit. You can make prop bets. You could use a props builder. Uh, I could show you some of that. They don't always line up, but it's kind of really a cool deal. You could even get cryptocurrency rewards. There's over 300 casino games. And again, sports, horse racing, and politics. I mean, you could bet it's like about 200 names on the list of some of those things. And VIP customer service, you'll get service within one minute via chat or phone. And uh, like I said, I, I was blown away. I've been on a number of these sites throughout the years. And just to be able to go on here and use that, uh, use the promo code Steel City or Bitly slash B U S R dash Steel City, and you can get a match up to a thousand dollars plus twenty five dollar casino chips, so you can play in those casino games. There's also some referral bonuses too: blackjack, American roulette, baccarat. That sound like I feel like Austin Powers when I'm talking about baccarat. So uh, let's jump in here. Of course, there's, uh, as I'm recording this, the Thursday night game that's going to be going on soon. And I almost kind of want to get my money in on this, to be completely honest. This game, Miami visiting the Cincinnati Bengals. Uh, Bengals are a four-point favorite in this game. It's just such a sucker bet when I don't know the health of Tua and some of the other things that are going on. 48 and a half over under. This one could have some fireworks. I, I, I love looking at some of these lines. And 43 and a half, a lot of, a lot of close lines this week though. Vikings and saints 43 and a half over under. It's just two and a half points with the Vikings favored on the, on the, on the road. Uh, this is like, this is just like a, another um, one of these, like the Steelers, which the Steelers actually this time around, they're not going to get the same type of disrespect, but three and a half separates. Uh, you've got the Titans plus three and a half against the Colts. You've got the uh, Falcons plus one and a half at home with the Cleveland Browns. And then uh, the Washington Commanders are getting three points uh, at Dallas. And then the Jets are getting three points at the Pittsburgh Steelers. And we see the money line is the Jets at plus 136 with the Steelers at minus 168. And if you decide, uh, you know, I, I hate to do this and disparage my Steelers here, but I, I mean, these games have been pretty close. And hopefully um, we can see the Steelers maybe manage to make this a uh, more than a three point game. That would be very nice. But as you add some, uh, as you add some of your bets here to the um, bet slip, it'll start to create where you could do place single bets or you could do the prop builder. Now, (laughs) keep in mind, all the things that I just said about the Steelers, like with defense and even with offense, it makes it very difficult for me to necessarily uh, suggest what props to maybe go after. And Deontay Johnson is still 
been putting up the numbers right now, of course. But after that, man, it becomes really tough. Like you've seen some of the statistics that I've put out here on Mitch Trubisky and his lack of passing. So if we head back over and just take a look at maybe even some of the prop bets, I, what I was trying to do earlier was click on plus three New York Jets. This could be like a one or two point game. And here you go. You could put, uh, you could set all of your bet amounts at the same time. I could put, I could be put 10 bucks down because I'm not always the big spender. When it comes to some of this stuff and let's see, there's 274 props for this game, uh, by the way, and the over under for uh, this game is 41 and a half, which is very difficult for me to, to, to take the over, to be completely honest. And Zach Wilson hasn't been playing and the Steelers are struggling to score touchdowns. Whew. I might have to go, might have to go with the under. Um, but we'll see, but we have some game props. There's also, uh, there's a ton. I could, I could spend all day going through this. There's the parlays, which my, uh, boy, Zach flash Celadonia would absolutely love. But as you take a look at this total touchdowns over under for the Steelers or the, or the jets, it's a uh, two and a half over under, you almost got to go under minus one thirty nine, but still you see what the return is a $10 bet. You're going to get 17 bucks back on that and it'll do all the math for you. So if you don't understand necessarily all the odds, um, you could go get your match, match your deposit in there and like you could ask the customer service people they're, they're there and they're willing to help. So it's bit.ly slash B U S R dash steel city underground. And just one more, because I was looking at this a little earlier. I mean, time of the score over under seven minutes, elapse three straight scores by either team. Yes. No. Um, you know, anytime I see something that's like a plus, like I want to bet on that. And it's just impulsive, but team to score last team to score first race to 10 points, highest scoring half. Uh, and then you can actually say first or second, you could say highest scoring quarter. Well, there's a big, uh, big win, little win and points, largest leader over under 14 and a half. <laughs> Whoa. I mean, I think there's some, again, it's the, you know, never say never in the national football league on any given Sunday. So I have to take a look over at BUSR. I think you'll enjoy it again. That promo codes, the steel city or bitly slash BUSR dash steel city. Um, some familiar faces on the jets defense, although some are showing up on the injury report here as well. Carl Lawson, one of the edge rushers that formerly of the Cincinnati Bengals, uh, with the Jets last year, got hurt, got banged up. And you're going to see some uh, some different names, some different faces maybe on the Jets as well. Oh, I forgot to mention when they're on offense. Well, let's talk about, I'm, I'm kind of jumping around all over. We'll get into this injury report here in a second because they got three offensive tackles now on injured reserve, which, yikes, that's just, uh, I should just say Yoy and double Yoy. Uh, but some other familiar faces such as C.J. Mosley roaming the middle of the field. So these are the kind of guys that you're going to have to go up against. There's LaMarcus Joyner and Jordan Whitehead that are the safety soft gar uh, sauce Gardner and uh, DJ Reed. Brandon Eccles showed up on this injury report as a DMP the last couple of days. So he's got two days of uh, practice with a DMP, his ankle, or I'm sorry, limited with the hamstring. Quincy Williams, uh, another one of the uh, line linebackers. Uh, inside linebackers there with C.J. Uh, Mosley. Uh, they kind of play, well, I should say more of a 4-3. Uh, it's sub-package football again because you've got Carl Lawson uh, as an edge rusher, Josh Franklin Myers as one of the edge rushers. So Quincy Williams kind of almost like more of an outside line, 4-3 three, three outside linebacker. You're going to have him, uh, C.J. Mosley and Quan Alexander, but Quincy Williams is the one who showed up with the DMP on the ankle. I'm sorry, Brandon Eccles, who gets quite a bit of playing time in the sub packages as a corner, was limited two days with a hamstring. Josh Franklin Myers was also limited, so that's the other, the defensive end or edge rusher. And then, of course, full practice for Zach Wilson, who's looking to make his 2022 season debut. My apologies. I hate when I get these things wrong. National Coffee Day. Ah, that's what we need. Starbucks didn't participate. Cheap SOBs. Anyways, <laughs> I guess you get some extra points. I'm not a Starbucks person. You give me Dunkin' or I could do the McCafe or anything else. Uh, I'm not really like a go out and get coffee. I, I do the whole, I do the Keurig thing, you know, here or there. So I know Brian's not the big coffee guy, but eh, that's too bad. He's not here. He can't besmirch me. Speaking of which, uh, Keller Witherspoon, I may as well get this one out of the way too, has been a DMP 
with his hamstring injury as well for the Steelers. And it uh, doesn't look good for his participation on Sunday if he can't get out there on Friday. But check out the cheat sheet, and we'll go over that rather quickly. We had a scare with Micah Fitzpatrick as well with a concussion. Full participant the last two days. And also a scare with Kevin Dotson, left guard. Full participant last two days. And, of course, Presley Harvin with the hip. Full participant last two days. Larry Ogunjobi got a Veterans Day off. So everyone, aside from Akella Weatherspoon and, of course, TJ Watt, uh, he's sitting there on injured reserve. So that doesn't really count. We've already kind of ruled him out. Everyone's looking healthy uh, with the exception of Weatherspoon and the Steelers. In that case, we'll just have Levi Wallace jump in there. Cam Sutton will be playing more along the boundaries as he normally does, and then he kind of slides and moves around, and we'll see if they decide to use. It'll probably be Arthur Mallette that gets more playing time, I would imagine, as a maybe Trey Norwood. Trey Norwood could too, but there's going to be somebody that's going to be covering the slot, playing the nickel in that kind of capacity. I think the Steelers have enough dudes to be able to cover there. Like I said, Alex Highsmith leading the league in sacks so when he's up against this uh new york jets offense they're now playing with uh some uh backup tackles they've got max mitchell and connor mcdermott and if those names don't sound uh familiar to you but they probably don't because they had originally the jets planned on having let's see dwayne brown was part of this. Well, Dwayne Brown came in after George Fant and Makai Becton were also banged up preseason. And then Dwayne Brown couldn't get on the field either. And it's just been kind of a mess on the edges. So there could be a big day, even if Cam Hayward or DeMarvin Leal lines up in, in that kind of replacement type position we saw against the Patriots. Leal got a little bit, but not quite as much. And we'll see if Malik Reed can maybe use make some use of his veteran experience here against some um, lesser experienced tackles uh, for the Jets. Uh, also, uh, taking a look up and down the Jets uh, roster as well. Uh, you've got a, you've got two different running backs that are going to get some time here on the field. You've got the rookie Brees uh, Hall who he's not maybe running for a ton of yards, but he is also catching the ball out of the backfield as well. He had six. He has had six catches in two of three games this season. He leads all rookie, rookie running backs with 13 catches and ranks second with 213 scrimmage yards. Michael Carter has uh, 368 scrimmage yards, so 92 per game in four career games against the AFC North. Well, three of those AFC North games, the Jets have played all AFC North teams to start the first four weeks of the season. So they've had Baltimore, they've had Cleveland, and then they just most recently had last weekend Cincinnati Bengals, so number four, numero four. They go through the whole division in the first four weeks. It's pretty crazy. So four of those games for Michael Carter, who I just had up on the board here, um, just against the, the AFC North within the division right now. You also have uh, Garrett Wilson from Ohio State. Rookie, six catches for 60 yards last week. He leads all all rookies uh, right now with 18 catches and ranks tied second with 214 yards as one of two rookies combined with Drake London. Uh, we'll see later this year with the Atlanta Falcons with 50-plus receiving yards in each of the first three weeks. Also, Corey Davis of the Titans. He's... Um, 75 plus receiving yards in two or three games in 2022. He had a, t uh, a TD catch a little while back, several years ago, when Tennessee played against the Steelers. I don't know why that's relevant, but it's on my stat sheets here. And Tyler Conklin led the team with career high in catches uh, last week with eight and receiving yards, 84. So he aims for three in a row with six plus catches. So he too has been a, a formidable weapon for the New York Jets. The New York Jets, uh, however, uh, no longer, uh, may maybe no longer Joe Flacco. We'll see. It looks like it's going to be Zach Wilson that's going to get his shot. The Steelers are going to have to uh, put some pressure on the quarterback because no matter who it is, if it's Flacco, Flacco will still slice and dice you if he has all the time in the world. And like I said, Corey Davis, Garrett Wilson, Tyler Conklin, Brees Hall, Michael Carter, whoever this ball, I mean, those are dump-off candidates too. No much more different than uh, Mitch Trubisky has been known to do. So you, you have to be aware that um, these particular players can still uh, put a dent in your defense. And with Cam Sutton kind of sliding over, you got to hope Terrell Edmonds has a pretty solid game or Trey Norwood can line up on one of these guys like Conklin. And, you know, the Bengals made pretty short work of the Jets last week, unlike what the Browns did in collapsing 
in the final two minutes the week before. The Jets could easily be 0-3. The Ravens also handled business. you got to hope that the Steelers, they handle their business as well. It's a common opponent amongst all of these players. It's good for tiebreaker purposes. It's also an AFC conference game. I think this is a big one. And I think it is a really big one. So it's going to be interesting to keep an eye, again, on the quarterback situation. But defensively, I think the Steelers... <sighs> Devin Bush made some comment. <laughs> he said something about, you know, the bottling up the Jets as far as their run game. And the Jets are like seventh from the bottom when it comes to running or rushing the football. So Devin Bush, uh, you know, I, I, I like the energy. I really do. But where it's really at is bringing the pressure on the quarterbacks. And yeah, stop the run game. My Travis Adams got elevated. This week over Tyson Alulu, we were mentioning that on the previous show as to, you know, 35-year-old Tyson Alulu coming off of that injury where he didn't play most of the last year. Is he getting a slow start? Really wasn't playing a lot of snaps, but, you know, against two primarily run-oriented offenses that the Steelers have played over the last two weeks in the Patri- with the Patriots and the Browns. Montrevious Adams has been named a starter now at that kind of, like, nose tackle position the Steelers don't use too often, maybe about a quarter of the game, a third of the game, but Adams is going to be the one that might be getting more nudging towards 20 to 30 snaps in this game versus Tyson Alou reverting maybe to somewhere between 10 and 15. Uh, this could be concerning too, because now we're counting on Adams. And it was like, you know, I was a big Adams guy. I called him. I said, resign that King, you know, during the off season, I wanted to bring him back into the fold. Let's see if he just didn't look good just because the other guys looked so poor when we're talking about Isaiah Bugs or, Car- or Carlos Davis or any of the other players. Isaiah Laudermilk hasn't been able to get out on the field either recently. So let's see if Adams has got what it takes because the last time the Steelers tried this type of deal middle of last season and switching the guys that are in the interior there to stop the run, it wasn't pretty. And they got gashed by the Lions. They got gashed by the Vikings. I'm pretty sure they got gashed by just about everyone. It was their worst Worst defense in like 30 years against the run or otherwise primarily against the run. So uh, they're going to be up against, let's see, there's still Lakin Tomlinson. That's here as one of the starting guards. He's a, he's a, it was a pretty big signing for the Jets. And he, and let me see, uh, Connor McGovern. Did I say Connor McGovern was playing tackle? I think I meant to say Elijah Vera Tucker is fitting in in that position uh, at right guard. So, yeah, Max Mitchell and Connor McDermott. I didn't say Connor McGovern. So the interior of Lincoln Tomlinson, Connor McGovern, and Elijah Vera Tucker, the interior of their line is pretty strong, but coming off the edges, those guys are going to have the Steelers, hopefully, hopefully, hopefully they're able to bring some heat and get after the QB. Uh, but the defense, again, they got to rely on the offense to do something and do something uh, major and large or else these guys that you're going to be taking a look at on defense they're going to be getting they're going to be getting dragged around and they're not going to be able to hold the time of possession battle and that has been the problem thus far you can't have the three and outs and the punts and the punts have got to be on point too and Presley Harvin has been inconsistent we don't necessarily like to see that so in looking at this are the, this is probably like, I think it was ranked like the worst matchup of the week, which is pretty poor when you're talking about the Steelers on one side of this contest. If they fall out of this one, it's not looking too pretty on the horizon before the bye week. Mike Tomlin, is he going to be stubborn? We've seen him pull the trigger before in a game. Doesn't always do it. He had an injured Byron Leftwich years ago that couldn't complete a deep ball in a Ravens game. That was a primetime game. Didn't make the switch then to Charlie Batch. He knew who Charlie Batch was. Wasn't putting Charlie Batch in. That was when Ben Roethlisberger was injured. And we didn't see, we did see a change at one point from Mason Rudolph to Duck Hodges with when they played the Bengals and they couldn't get any offense generated. And that led to only like one touchdown pass to James Washington. But it was enough of a spark, and that was a victory, and that kept them in contention for the postseason that year. But you can't leave the defense hanging. You got to get some players involved. That also includes Deontay Johnson catching passes. That includes getting Pat Fryermuth. You got to keep the defense fresh. A fresh Cam Hayward is a beast, but man, they've been out there so much longer. Like I had mentioned earlier, I had mentioned so. Uh, i trying to think if there's anything else to cover here. I mean, the Jets, like I said, seventh from the bottom in their run attack, pretty much where the Steelers are really mid. They've been a lot better <laughs> with the pass. I mean, Joe Flacco has 901 yards passing. 
If Zach Wilson can go out there, he throws 300 against the Steelers. They're in deep, deep trouble. And that's going to open up that run game as well. You'd be a fool not to think so. I mean, the Steelers only with 569 yards passing on offense. They've given up 810 to opponents through these three games. And the Steelers have run for 270, not even 100 in each game. The 428 of their opponents, I get three games in 11 days. That's uh, that's a, that's a tall bill of order, but it's got to be better. And you got to aid, you definitely have to aid this defense. So that's going to be my keys to the game. No matter how they get this done, the offense has to have over 30 minutes time of possession. They have to win the time of possession battle. The Steelers also have to win when it comes to giveaways and takeaways. They have to be in that plus column as well there. I think that is pretty much common sense in any football game. If you're in the minus column, you're not going to have a good chance at uh, victory. I don't know if I've got any other ones. I mean, this could still be done with Mitch Trubisky, but I don't know. I just, I, I, I was surprised. I mean, I've been at two of the three games in person so far this year. I've seen some of the shots that they're able to take downfield. I'm also, you know, you got to play against whatever's on the table there. Jalen Warren, hopefully he can give, provide a little bit of a spark. He had one and you had that illegal man downfield. Probably could have been a different penalty by Chooks Akora for than what they called it for because downfield on a shovel pass seems a little suspect, as you may have heard on some other shows. So just bringing that up as well. Uh, Steelers, I, I think the offensive line has performed admirably. It's not as though the Jets are a 100% healthy team. They are banged up. They're, uh, you know, they got Carl Lawson out there, but maybe their other edge rusher is there. Maybe one of their other linebackers isn't there. Maybe you could exploit this a little bit. Maybe they could take advantage of this a little bit. And maybe on the other side of the ball, they could hit those other offensive tackles. So I'm going to look for the Steelers to put apply some pressure on defense. They got to get after whoever it is, Zach Wilson or Joe Flacco, at least three or four times in this game. There's my third key. I always feel better when I do it in threes. <laughs> I'm sure you're there with me when you're talking about this stuff as well. So we'll see. Battle of two one and two teams, neither of which really has an identity right now. But I know the Jets, they were looking to be a lot more improved. They have a young team with a lot of new players. They didn't have their their cornerstone guy that they drafted to be their quarterback in these games. And we'll see if the Steelers, the guy that they drafted, they didn't just draft Kenny Pickett to just have him play backup for the next four or five years. That's usually not what happens. That's what happens when you're a middle round pick, maybe and playing behind a future hall of famer, such as Mason Rudolph did with Ben Roethlisberger, but this is not Ben Roethlisberger. That's out there playing. I know there's folks that are going to talk about, well, Ben called his own plays. This and that look it's on his wrist. It's on his wristband. Those are Matt Canada plays before they're Randy Fickner plays and before they're Todd Haley plays. And this offense has stunk for the last few years, pre Matt Canada, going back to when they let Todd Haley go. Todd did take some risks, but when you got the killer bees that were out there, I could, I could, I get being aggressive on fourth and ones and things of that nature. You see other teams get aggressive like that too. We saw John Harbaugh come in to what was Heinz field and do that last year and flopped with Lamar Jackson, a former MVP Folks, it's not always going to be successful, but we got to hope you're looking for mistake-free football. Mitch provides mistake-free football, but at a very much a handicap of everything else. So, <clears throat> excuse me. That's, that'll do it here for me here with the Steel City Underground podcast. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. I think I hit all of the points that I wanted to make. Don't forget to check out BUSR Steelers uh, three-point favorites in this game. So the Jets... They get three points. Will it be the difference of a field goal with, um, you know, Chris Boswell or Greg Zerline, one of the Jets specialists? I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see if the Steelers could at least pick this up and get the 500. It's better. It's about where I thought they might be in this first quarter of the season. I won't have, even though I have some disappointment and some of this is frustrating to maybe watch. I also realize that I am entitled and I am spoiled with all of the good seasons that Ben gave us. And yes, Mike Tomlin can win without Ben Roethlisberger. And he's going to prove that this year, but I, I look at the methods. He's not going to come right out and tell you that he's going to pull the rabbit out of the hat. I don't think, I don't think Kenny, I think the way that Kenny is going to get on the field to be completely honest is Mitch is going to be yanked or it's got to be the bye week. At this point, I was thinking, you know, Kenny and the Jets, and I'm still thinking that. But the wide receivers, they're getting a little testy out there. They're not getting maybe the volume or the looks that they've got. 
The yards after the catch, of course, when you got to stretch out, lay out, make that one-handed catch, and you're tagged down on the ground, there's not going to be any yards after the catch. It's going to be wherever it goes in the air. And there isn't a whole lot of air yards when you're throwing around or near the line of scrimmage all of the time. Uh, just, uh, I'm still, I'm hoping for the best. I'm hoping for a nice let's say clean, maybe not necessarily perfect, but clean football game from the Steelers. Again, got to win the time of possession, got to win the giveaway, takeaway battle, and you got to apply pressure to the quarterback, Sands, TJ Watt. If we could see some of those things, then maybe there's a glimmer, a bright line down that hall. And if it is, if it is down that tunnel, if if we get a little more brighter of a light, and it is Kenny Pickett, and he provides that spark, I think it's going to look even a little bit brighter. Mike Tomlin, like people said, if he pulls the trigger on Kenny, he's not going to be able to go back on it, right? But why do you need to go back on it? Just ride. Just ride with it. I know there's Matt Williamson's and people like that are talking about practice. I'll be the first to admit, when I was at training camp, I raised my hand right here, and I solemnly swear, I was anti-starting Kenny Pickett in year one. Let him sit. I said, take the Patrick Mahomes route and some of the other quarterbacks of the past that sat and learned uh, it's kind of an apprenticeship. But then when I saw him in games, it's a whole different story. And that dude brings it for games. I'm not saying he dogs practice, but he just looks like a whole different person. Like his level raises. And if he could raise that level for the Steelers, I'm still going to be advocating for that. And I'd still advocate. I'm not against Mason Rudolph. You know, I've defended him for the longest time. I don't know if he has the same kind of ceiling that Kenny might. First round pick and all those numbers he set at Pitt. But don't forget, Mason was an accomplished co uh, college guy, too. He was the sixth quarterback taken in that draft. It's not saying much now when you look at Baker Mayfield and Sam Darnold and Josh Rosen and that, but there was still Josh Allen. There was still Lamar Jackson in that draft. Those are the peers that he's up against. I mean, he may not be that bad after all, but can he provide a little bit when you're looking for a game manager and you're looking for somebody in the middle? Maybe they're not turning the ball over and they're doing just enough to provide some offensive scoring. Maybe he could do it as a game manager too. I'm kind of just, uh, I'm, I'm burned out. I'm burned out about talking about the quarterback position. I promised I wasn't going to say anything else. I broke my promise. I can't because this is the one glaring thing that I think supersedes everything else. You could say whatever you want about head coach or offensive coordinator, offensive line. I look at all these skill position players and I look at the guys on defense and I, I what should be an elite defense, especially if they get their main guy back, the reigning defensive player of the year. If they could kind of steady the ship here, whether that's can whoever that's with, they got to get it done. It's just difficult for me to see, based on all of the patterns that I've seen with Mitch Trubisky's play, past and present, that he could be that guy. So, again, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Look forward to. I'm gonna try to catch some of your comments. I can't always catch all of them. Busy guy. Check out the cheat sheet, uh, which will be right up after this, actually. So, uh, sometime late Friday afternoon or into the evening, we'll have whatever injury updates there might be for this game with the Pittsburgh Steelers and the New York Jets. And let's just hope Pat Fryermuth, I should put him as a key too. He's a little bit of a bonus. Let's get this guy involved in the game a lot more. His catch radius is sick, and we know he can break it open. Just got to hope, hope that whoever's throwing the ball can see him across the middle. I anticipate some plays here. So, folks, my name is Joe Kuzma, and as we always do, Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Thank you for supporting Steel City Underground and the Steel City Underground podcast. Until next time, we encourage everyone out there to be safe, be good, and we'll catch you later. We would like to thank you for listening and remind our listeners to follow us on social media and our website, www.steelcityunderground.com.